I was uh, in school in Barry uh, Academy, and I had just started college at Barry, and uh, I had the summer off, and I went to uh, Mobile to work for the summer, and uh, so at the end of the summer, I said, that's enough. I'm going out and help those boys out. It was frightening to have a war going on, but uh, I felt that it was my responsibility to protect this country. December 7, 1941. I was at Berry College. Uh, I remember that uh, my roommate wrote on an old radio that we had we jointly owned, and he said when he heard the news, he wrote war. And uh, so eventually I got into it. I think that, that we really, the country would be better off if we had universal military training. I feel that way because uh, people need discipline. And ordinarily, you don't get it. This is one thing that we're, we're lacking in this country is discipline. I uh, had some unusual experiences, but uh, uh, I had a couple fights, but that happens to everybody. People push you around until you find out, find out you won't push, and then they, they leave you alone. They, Woke up early in the morning. It was a hurry up and wait type situation, and it was a, a situation that re required your attention. You couldn't uh, couldn't sleep through it. Sent me to uh, the Air Force Training School, and I I went to school on the V twenty fours. And then I went to school, uh, gunnery school, and then later uh, we had our third phase training. And then from there I went, I uh, was shipped overseas. What happened once you arrived in England? Well, I had, we had a practice mission that day, and uh, Uh, we were. I was coming back from from the uh, the airplane and back to the barracks, and uh, I heard this big boom and a swish, 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 and two airplanes had collided in the fog, and I ran to where I heard the sound, and I found one fella that without a parachute was flat in the, on the earth, and he was almost covered by uh, the soft earth. But he fell out of the airplane. Another one took the top out of a chicken house that the, the English farmer owned. And uh, I said, gosh, this could be dangerous. And but that was my only reaction. Can you tell me what your first mission was like? Well, it was uh, to Bremen, and uh, it was uh, uh, something I had never experienced before. The German, it was in early, in the late uh, uh, 43, and uh, I uh, had never experienced anything like this, uh, but th those little puffs of smoke that came up all around the airplane were flat, exploding, and uh, that was very dangerous. We were uh, flying out of out of. Uh, Southern Italy, and uh, 
we were bombing up in the Po Valley. And so we got to the target and and uh, the pilot had salvoed the bombs and the bomb bay doors wouldn't close and so they asked me to close them. Well, I couldn't close them, you know, because you have to set a cam down below. But I didn't know that the bombs had been salvoed. I, uh, I checked the pilot's aisle stand and there's a little handle that you pull up, it's a red handle. You pull up, and you pull up so far, it opens the bomb bay doors, pull up a little further, and it uh, salvos the bomb. So I checked it, and the pilot had stuffed the cable back down in the, in the little slot. And so I didn't know uh, that the bombs were salvoed. So what I did was, so, well, I'll just crank them down. So I put on a walk around vital and I walked outside, the bomb bay doors were open, and I walk, held on to the number six bulkhead, reached out and grabbed the uh, bomb rack, pulled myself over, and uh, I was positioning myself. You had to, to uh, hold the selector valve for the bomb bay doors in the down position. And then you had to uh, do some other things like uh, you had to insert the crank. And the crank came out in between. The bomb racks are like this. And the bombs are on the outside and it's open down below. And they had to, to uh, crank down the uh, the uh, the doors. So I went through that process, cranked down the doors. Do doors on one side, and I was shifting myself to, to uh, the other side. And uh, I turned loose the handle, and the navigator who had been holding the selection valve in the down position turned it loose. And there's a, there's a hydraulic accumulator with air pressure on one side and it caused the bomb bay doors to open up again. <laughs> you turn loose the section. And the handle in between the, the bomb racks also turned and flipped my feet off the catwalk. And I grabbed on, and, but uh, there's one thing I forgot to tell you, that the, the, the walk-around bottle blew off and we were at about 22,000 feet. And that, there's not much oxygen up there I grabbed the bomb rack and I pulled myself up and held on to the bomb rack so I could get enough oxygen to get back in. And uh, uh, then I knew what, what was wrong. <laughs> Slow learner. <laughs> but I uh, uh, pulled myself. Uh, Back in, and then the, the radio operator held out his hand, and, and I reached out for it, and they pulled me back into the uh, flight deck. We were uh, flying out out of England, and uh, we uh, uh, had a mission. It was a short mission. And when we you go deep into Germany, the Luftwaffe was very active at that time. And uh, we had a lot of planes shot down by, by German aircraft. We flew uh, this mission, and it was to bomb the, the uh, rocket installations that they set up to uh, across the, the uh, English Channel from England and they were lobbing these rockets into London. And they, they was a big priority to get those uh, bombed. So we went on this mission and we couldn't find them. Uh, it was cloudy and we couldn't find the target. So we had to uh, drop our bombs on another target. So we went out. Uh, 
So we were looking forward to the next day. We thought it would be an easy mission. They dropped the altitude down to about 16,000 feet. And uh, so we went in, and uh, right when we uh, hit the, the uh, European coast, the French coast, we, uh, we had a, a hit. And uh, we had an engine on fire. And so the first person to see it first was a fellow in the waist section. And he grabbed the mic and held it down. And he said, waist gun to the pilot, waist gun to the pilot. Number four engine is on fire. And it wasn't four, number four at all, it was number one. <laughs> so the pilot went about cutting the gasoline off to that engine. And uh, and then <coughs> feathering the engine, so the, the, the prop didn't operate. So uh, I, I couldn't wait until he <laughs> got off. I saw the fire also. So uh, when he finally got off, I said, uh, "Top three to follow uh, number." Four engine is, is, is not number four, it's number one engine is on fire. So I, uh, they had to reverse their process. There's a process they go through, reverse the process. But we only had, uh, we had a bad engine to begin with on the, the takeoff, and uh, we, uh, only had one really good engine, and I looked up and saw the formation, and we had dropped like a <laughs> rock. Mm. But anyway, they finally got the the uh, engines running again, and then we made it back. We dropped our bombs on the target, incidentally. We, we followed the group in, into the target. You were sent to Italy to replace crews. What happened there? Well, uh, they had a low-level raid over Palestine, and they, it was a, had a mix-up. And they had, when they had the low-level raid, they had the airplanes coming in and dropping their bombs, and then another group coming in and running into the exploding bombs. They were delayed action bombs and, and bombing the pl our own planes. And so uh, they, they lost a lot of uh, airplanes on over Pulaski. I was uh, in uh, Italy. I had finished my tour of duty, my 50 missions, so, and I was in Italy waiting to come back when they made the invasion of Normandy. And I was so happy to hear that because I just to think that I would have to come back. What do you remember about VE Day? <clears throat> well, uh, I, that was an all-night affair for me, and I did a lot of drinking and, and uh, had a headache the next morning. <laughs> so I was back in... Uh, in uh, Harvard, Nebraska. Well, they sent me to school on the B-29 up in Seattle, Washington, and that's for three months. And then they put me in charge of a sub-depot hangar in Harvard, Nebraska. And uh, I uh, worked there, and I was working about 14 hours a day. And uh, so I volunteered to go to uh, Cuba and uh, t to fly in that area. And we were hauling supplies to B-29 crews that were training in that, in that area, Puerto Rico, uh, uh, places like that. Finally, uh, they called me back. Uh, they were keeping me down there by saying, no transportation available. <laughs> 
That's and they said the B-24 down for me when you register with Georgia Tech and start start to school and you haven't been to school for three and a half years <laughs> and you they give you all that algebra and physics and stuff uh, throw that to you all in a big lump that was a harassing experience <laughs> you uh, some fellows on my crew I was but I I got busy at Georgia Tech, and I, I uh, really neglected them. I did go to visit members, of, some of the members of my crew. Uh, one in New York, and I, some I couldn't find. My commanding officer was Jimmy Stewart. That's that's not true. When I first met him, he, we were in the, in the training phase of our, uh, we had gone to the schools and we, we were, had come together as crews and we were training together just before being sent overseas. And uh, he uh, was a second lieutenant and uh, he had joined the, the uh, group and he was uh, our squadron, not, not the group operation officer, but squadron operation officer. And uh, he was uh, a very nice fellow. He wasn't chummy with anybody. In fact, uh, I was following him across the compound and one day, and uh, a couple of girls from the PX rushed over and said, Jimmy, give me your signature. And he wouldn't give it <laughs> the signature. He, he said, I'm here not as Jimmy Stewart, the movie actor. I'm here to help in the war effort. He said, I, we'll, we'll get to that after we get back to uh, normal life. How would you say that your service overseas affected the rest of your life? Well, it, it, uh, it consolidated that discipline that uh, the Army instilled in the beginning. I, th I think it, 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 it gave the reason for the discipline. I just think that the most important thing is to be able to concentrate on one thing or and uh, have the discipline to to stay on the, the same track and don't don't get off don't let things take you away from divide your attention the most important thing in my life is liberty to live your life as, as the lord has allowed you to do this is uh, when the last teardrop falls, and this is uh, about the, it's not about my life, it's based on my life, mm -hmm. but uh, it's one of those situations where there's so much risque stuff involved in it that I didn't want to be associated with it. Oh, I so I said, it's a memoir of John Jones. Okay. <laughs> but based on a little bit of reality. Yes. <laughs> okay.